The Catman of Aleppo, written by Irene Latham and Kareem Shamsi Basha, illustrated by Yugo Shimizu. This is the true story of a real man named Allah who lives in the city of Aleppo in the country of Syria. Allah loves his city of Aleppo. He loves its narrow alleys and covered bazaars selling pistachios, jasmine soap, and green za'atar. He loves the boiled corn and dried figs offered on the street. Most of all, he loves the people of Aleppo. They are gentle, polite, and loving, like him. Even when war comes to Aleppo, Allah doesn't flee like so many others. He continues his work as an ambulance driver. He swerves through rubbled streets and carries the wounded to safety. He comforts and holds them. Allah has a big heart. Allah's work is important, but he misses his loved ones. Where are they now? Are they safe? He misses the way things used to be before the war. Aleppo city center no longer echoes with the rich, exciting sounds of copper pot pounding and traditional sword sharpening. His neighborhood is empty. Except for the many cats left behind. The abandoned cats roam crumpled buildings and prowl filthy alleyways for food. Their homes have been destroyed, and now no one is left to love them and stroke their backs. No one is there to give them food and water. The cat's lonely, confused faces remind Allah of the loved ones he has lost. So many goodbyes. So many people he hasn't been able to help. So many days he feels lonely and confused, too. On his way home from work, Allah stops the ambulance. Two cats call to him from the branches of an ancient olive tree. Three more peek from a Syrian juniper tree. Allah's big heart swells with love for them. Bombs may still fall, and his loved ones may never come back to Aleppo, but there is something he can do. He can look after the cats. After his shift the next day, Allah uses the little money he has to buy fresh meat. When he unwraps the meat, the cats raise their heads and sniff the air. They are extra hungry. Tai ata ata, Allah calls. Here, kitty kitty. A dozen cats rush toward him, their tails high. He gives them bits of meat and talks softly to them. The cats chew and purr, purr and chew. Soon their bellies are full, and so is Allah's heart. He smiles and pets the cats, and they love him back. Allah brings meat and water for the cats every day. A dozen turns into 20, and 20 turns into 50. He can no longer care for the cats alone. I need a place to keep them safe, Allah tells his remaining neighbors. Together, we can save them all. Word spreads, and volunteers arrive. Donations pour in from many different countries. Everyone wants to help the cats of Aleppo. Allah collects enough money to buy a building with a shaded courtyard. He names the sanctuary 
the house of Katz Ernesto, in memory of a friend's beloved cat. Soon cats are everywhere. Orange cats, striped cats, white cats, gray cats, and black cats. For every cat, there's a dish of food and a bowl of water. Now, when people must leave Aleppo, they bring their cats to Allah before they go. Hope and love fill people's hearts when they learn about the sanctuary's success and they send more money. With so much support, Allah is able to rescue other animals too. He builds a playground for the children still living in Aleppo. He helps dig a well so everyone can have fresh water. He distributes fruit, ma'amul, and barazette cookies to the people he meets. Allah's big heart is happy. All he did was love the cats, and that love multiplied and multiplied again. He still misses his beloved ones and the way Aleppo used to be before the war. But now Allah is known around the world as the cat man of Aleppo. Allah loves his city of Aleppo. He hopes one day soon its bazaar selling pistachios and jasmine soap will return and he can enjoy eating boiled corn and dried figs. Meanwhile, he loves the sanctuary's courtyard filled with fat, sleepy-eyed cats. There's no place he'd rather be.